I'm going to spend the first few slides here just telling you about why I'm so excited about machine learning at Uber and why I think it's an awesome place to do machine learning. Before we dive into topic examples, I am the co-lead of the MAPS organization here at Uber. Uh, I'm generally also seen as a pain in the neck when it comes to machine learning across the company and, and helping teams to understand the potential of this stuff. Um, but I just want to share why I, why I came to Uber uh, about two years ago um, and, and why I'm really excited to be here. So really what I'm going to try to convey to you today is that ML is really the key to Uber's future. In other words, Uber cannot succeed without machine learning being at the core of what we do. And the second thing that I want to postulate to you folks is that in my opinion, Uber is a really awesome place to do ML and a place where I'm really excited to work on these problems. And, and the great thing is that this becomes a virtuous circle, right? Like when you, um, when you get to work on awesome problems that affect the company, you actually develop new techniques and push the limits and that allowed, makes it an even more awesome place to work and so on. And so it's a really exciting place to be. So let's tackle each of these different problems individually. So let's talk about why I think it's key to the future. And really when you think about it, this is our mission. Our mission is about reliable transportation everywhere for everyone. And it sounds like this, how could this possibly be connected with machine learning? But when you take those individual words and disassemble them, you suddenly see why it is that we need machine learning in these places. Now, the minute that you talk about transportation, you're talking about agents that move around in the physical world. So for those of you who are not aware, Uber operates in something like 600 cities, which, which is just mind blowing in terms of like, imagine that there's five people helping Uber in each of those six, that's 3000 people there. And, and that means that you have a very, very physical interaction with the world. This is people moving around with their phones, uh, reporting on their location, trying to get problems solved, making economic decisions in, in, in the physical world. The second part of the thing that makes it like really, really right for machine learning is this concept of reliability. If you want to make a system reliable that lives in the real world, it's not just about three nine services and everything else. You need to be really good at predicting the future. You need to be able to predict the traffic on a Sunday afternoon when there's a baseball game happening at AT&T Park and understanding those dynamics. And the third word is everyone, right? How can you serve, when you try to serve everyone, that means you have to make the system not just convenient for people, but you have to efficiently use the resources you have available to you. Because if you can make it cheaper and, and, and easier for people to get around the world, then you make it more accessible to even those who may not have otherwise had access to such services. And what I'm gonna to try to explain to you is at the essence of these intersections of problems, is basically that machine learning is very well suited for handling three of the key problems that Uber faces. And that's that we live in an uncertain world, right? You, you need to be thinking very carefully about how you, how, how you can really squeeze these sigma, you know, the sigma values, these standard deviations down as low as possible. Because in many cases, reducing those sigma values equates directly to convenience for people, equates directly to people's income and lives. The second problem is complexity. And, and I really think that this is one of the key things that differentiates Uber. You know, there are a lot of companies out there that will help you serve an ad so you can buy a car online. And you type in a search query and you get a result. And then you click on the result. In other words, they're dealing with this, you know, clicking on particular parts of the screen. At Uber, we have to deal with this, actually driving. And you know, you'll hear later in this afternoon about like what some of the exciting problems we're facing on things like autonomous vehicles involved and the complexity that that introduces to the way we solve problems. And it's not just autom autonomous vehicles. The level of complexity of the problems that we have to deal with at Uber in terms of the number of different signals, the number of decisions that need to be made every second, the number of factors that need to be considered in those decisions is way, way more complex because of the, that interaction with the physical world and that physical presence that, that we have, that Uber is about atoms. And the final uh, reason that I think machine learning is at the heart of Uber is just the sheer data that Uber has to examine and process at ridiculous rates. We have multiple services at Uber that make decisions at hundreds of thousands of QPS or using machine learning services. The, what, what I think is interesting about Uber is the way that for the first time we have instrumented the city. And this data here shows all of the people using Uber at a particular time in London. And it gives you an idea of just how much data is flowing in. At any one time, we have hundreds of thousands of people connected to our platform. 
each uploading their location at rates up to two seconds, right? So, so it is just this massive influx. You have people making financial decisions at that rate and the scale of data that Uber has, there's just no alternative but to use machine learning. So that's why I think if, if, if we are to make Uber really successful, we need to nail machine learning. We need to build machine learning to tackle the uncertainty and complexity uh, and the quantity of data that we face. <clears throat> and so when it comes to why Uber is an awesome place to do machine learning, it's almost a corollary of that. And it's really that we have unique problems that we need to address at Uber that may never have been faced at the scale that Uber is at before in, in computer science or even artificial intelligence and machine learning. And the second thing is, we all know that if you really wanna be successful in machine learning, you have to have really, really interesting data. And, and, and I think you, you, we, we collectively, we realize how key data has been to some of the advances in machine learning, especially when you think about things like deep learning and how dependent that is on like hundreds of thousands, if not millions of images. And when I say it's unique, I, it has all of these different characteristics that are a consequence of the fact that Uber works with, with atoms more than it does with bits. And it's about this presence in the physical space. So it has this character of being spatial. Where you are now has correspondences. When you think about problems like ETAs and how does the traffic uh, in this particular part of the 101 affect traffic in other parts of the cities. It has this temporal nature as well because you know, traffic at a particular time affects traffic at a lot of other different times. And I've actually looked in the literature to see how much research has been done at looking at these spatial temporal problems. And it's very clear that it's still early days. There are entire classes of problems where there are gonna be fundamental advances in machine learning because that's what Uber needs to move the needle forward. There's the human element. You know, never has, has like a population had, like we're dealing with humans that are making complex decisions in real time. And factors like rationality and predictable irrationality become a factor. The, the, the active element is also very important. So who here knows what active learning is? Okay, a few of you. So, so think of active learning as human in the loop learning. When you have that physical presence that Uber has in across the cities in the world that it's in, that means that you have a group of people who really understand the domain. What if you don't just see it as a machine learning problem to be solved, but you saw it as a hybrid problem, a cyborg problem, if you like, of simultaneously solving the human, uh, the human and the machine working together to solve the problem. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, we have multiple services operating at hundreds of thousands of QPS, having to make decisions in under 100 milliseconds. And all these unique problems mean that it's a very, very interesting place to work. And finally, the other problem, the, the thing that makes it very compelling is just the quantity and interestingness of, this, of, of the data that we have available. This screenshot is from Uber Movement. This is a project that launched recently that has made uh, publicly accessible some of our data that talks about how do people move through a city. And this is actually turning out to be useful not just for Uber to make its business better and to be more effective, but it's helping cities to plan more effectively. And this is what I mean by Uber helping to instrument the physical world and understand another dimension of people's lives. I mean, at the end of the day, there's only a few consistent things that humans do, right? We eat, we look for shelter, we move from place to place. And, it's, it's, and, and like never have we had as much insights because of some of the data that we have at Uber into especially that third question. And that's what makes it exciting to be here. So in this first part of my talk, really what I wanted to share with you is that I'm really excited to be here because Uber both needs ML to succeed and it's also a very good place to do ML. And that virtuous cycle is something that makes it a real pleasure for me to work here. And with that, I'm gonna change gears.